Hey, it's Mike. It is Monday and I'm still wearing the exact same sweatshirt that I was wearing yesterday. Woke up not feeling great, decided what better way to spend my day if I'm not feeling great than in a hoodie. So I put this back on, no regrets. Uh, before I get into this video, uh, a couple pickups here. I've got a Fisk Rookie Cup. I already have his rookie card, but for autograph purposes, I prefer this over the rookie card, which he shares with two other players. So I'm going to send this off to get autographed at some point. And then Mike Baseball Collector sent me some awesome cards, including this autographed card of himself and Chasing Cardboard sticker, which will go on my laptop. And then some Perez Steel autographed cards. Give me an awesome deal on these. Uh, Happy Chandler there. I've got Rick Farrell. I've got Billy Williams. Joe Sewell. Buck Leonard. And Bob Lemon. So awesome. Thank you, Mike. Much appreciated. Those will go towards my new burgeoning collection of Perez Steel autographs. So what I'm here to talk about today is the basically the market for cards. It's uh, it's really interesting actually. Sports Collectors Digest just did an article, I think Friday, about how the vintage market is actually up. So since January 1st, vintage market's up 9.5%. And when you look at uh, the global uh, economy and you know all the stock markets, most things are down. Don't look at your 401k. Uh, the vintage market is actually up 434% since January 1st, 2020. So that's pre-pandemic. It's up big time since then. Meanwhile, the modern market, which goes from 1984 to 2008, is down 21% year over year. So those modern cards coming down in price, which is something that I noticed, and I mentioned this in my, uh, my video about the Portland card show a few weeks ago, or I guess it was only two weeks ago at this time. It seems crazy. Uh, I was seeing prices coming down. Uh, Ultra Modern, which they classify as 2008 till now, or any post-2008, I guess, down about 4.5% year over year. So there's Ultra Modern cards, and we're going to talk a little bit about why Ultra Modern might be down. Uh, that, that doesn't come from Sports Collector's Digest, but more speculation from me and a Twitter account that I follow. But uh, year over year, and I mentioned just since January 1st, vintage is up 9.6%. Year over year, vintage, and vintage is classified as 1946 to 1983, is up 14% since last September. Uh, Pre-war vintage, so 1945 and before, is up 15%, just about the same. Uh, within that, the vintage segment, Mickey Mantle is up 22% year over year, of course, buoyed by the $12.6 million SGC 1952 tops. Uh, Nolan Ryan's up 51% year over year. I don't think there have been any massive Nolan Ryan card sales. Uh, in the modern decliners that have contributed to that modern uh, market going down, you have Mike Trout down 41% year over year. Not a surprise with his injury, and people, I think, are leaving the market a little bit. Um, Kobe Bryant down 36% year over year, and a big part of this, um, this this tweet right here is great. He had his rookie Topps Chrome Refractor, Refractor in a BGS Black Label 10, Pristine 10, 18 months ago, in March of 2021, sold for $1.75 million in August, just a month ago. So less than 18 months between sales it sold for $800,000. So that is a decline of 55%. That's pretty significant. That's telling that the high-end cards are coming down in value pretty significantly. The, the ultra-modern and modern coming down big time. We're going to get into more of that. Um, Tom Brady, year over year, down 22%. The modern risers, obviously Aaron Judge up 110%, Josh Allen up 142%, Shohei up 38%. You know, it's tough to find a guy going up in value after an MVP season last year, but I think his season this year is even better. 
he just happens to be likely second to judge in, in the upcoming MVP vote. In my opinion, Shohei is having one of maybe the greatest season in baseball history, but uh, I think Judge will win the MVP. And this, this stuff, these ultra-modern things just go to speculating. These people are just speculating on how these guys are going to perform in the short term. You know, if I buy this card for $100 now, can I sell it for $300 in six months? And that's, that's not for me. It's, it's fun. I, I have some, well, actually, I don't do that at all, not in the short term. I have some Sandy Alcantara and Shane McClanahan cards that I'm holding on to long term. But the short-term speculating, especially on rookies, um, not for me. And obviously, I didn't mention any rookies here, but those are way down as well. What else drives these ultra-modern price issues? Uh, so I follow, and I've done a video on Eric Whiteback videos, the, the collectibles guru, at Eric Whiteback on Twitter. He does a lot of really cool stuff. And these tweets that I've culled here go back several months, I think back into July or August. But um, So one of them, which he just posted an hour or two ago, is a guy who was standing outside the National claiming that he's been waiting more than 10 years for his redemption from Panini. I don't know if that's true. It seems outrageous, but based on waits I've seen for redemptions, maybe it's true. Um, so in terms of quality issues, we have a Marvin Harrison upside down NFL shield. NFL patch in his uh, in his card. H how do you even do that? How you've got this? It's probably a one of one. I think I'm guessing. How is it possible to make that mistake and not have somebody say, "Hey, that's upside down"? And some people will say, "Well, Panini is doing that on purpose because it gives them publicity." But it doesn't give them good publicity. And I understand any publicity is good publicity, but I really don't think so in this case. Uh, they have this Steph Curry card with a Knicks patch and a Jordan Hill autograph on it. One card. It's a Steph Curry card. It's got the Knicks patch, and he's not a Knicks player in case you're not a basketball fan. And it's a Jordan Hill autograph. And Steph Curry, again, in case you're not a basketball fan, is not Jordan Hill. You've got a T. Higgins one of one card, but it's got a Herbert auto. T. Higgins is not Justin Herbert. That's not, that's not good. Another QC issue for Panini is this upside down Astros patch for Jordan Alvarez. And then this video of Cade Cunningham, the biggest rookie last year, certainly one of them. He was the number one draft pick and had a great, great rookie season. Turn over this card. It's on the back of it shows Cade Cunningham prism card. And so you think, oh, this is awesome. I've got a Cade prism card. Flip it over, it's Dwight Howard on the front. And then several big, big name, all-time great, upside-down autographs. Because they do the stickers. The sticker autographs, there are so many problems with sticker autographs, and this is one of them. They end up getting put on upside-down. And these, these players, you can't really read their autographs. So you have to figure out, is this... Is this, am I putting this on right? And they just don't take the time to really do it correctly. So they're putting on sticker autographs upside down. Uh, other problems we're seeing here are overprinting. Zion Williamson has two times as many cards as he has minutes played in the NBA. That's crazy. He's about 5,100 cards of Zion Williamson. Only tw he's only played 2,600 minutes. And with 5,100 Zion different cards, Michael Jordan, and that's only in three seasons, remember. Michael Jordan had 4,400 in his entire playing career. Overprinting again, Mac Jones, 2,100 different rookie card autographs. Pat Mahomes had 833. Tom Brady had 13. Now, Brady was a sixth round pick, but you look at the first round picks and they had very few autographs as well. They were just more scarce back then, and they're not anymore. And then you talk about overgrading of cards. People, and this isn't Panini's fault at all. It's, it's the, the grading companies and the, the people who are grading these cards. For instance, in the 2019 Prism Basketball set, 620,000 cards were graded in that set. 58% of them were base cards. 
What are we doing? Why are we grading so many base cards? I don't think anybody is anymore, or at least certainly not as many as they were before PSA had their blow up. And this is actually what caused that blow up and why prices had to go up. 22,000 base Kobe White cards were graded, his rookie card. 22,000, a PSA 10 in that card now goes for $4. You paid, I, I don't know, eight to $12 to grade that back when grades were cheaper. And now you're selling your dumping at half, the, half that cost at best. So let me know, what's the craziest Panini thing you've seen? Are you still buying ultra modern as investments or are you doing it for fun? I still buy them for fun. I'm not spending 20 bucks on or 25 bucks on a blaster and thinking I'm gonna get $40 worth of value out of it. I do it for fun very rarely now, far more rarely now than I was six months ago or, or a year ago. But let me know in comments, what, what, what are you seeing out there? Have you seen any crazy ultra modern cards that just were horrible QC issues? If you're new here, click that subscribe button. I put out three to four of these videos a week. I really appreciate you watching. Thanks.